centrally located. Okay. Um, now, not all the, rep the epithelium in the respiratory system is olfactory. So, you <laughs> I meant to say respiratory. Um, we do have a couple places where the epithelium is uh, responsible for transmitting the special sense of smell. And that is going to be over the superior nasal concha and the roof of the nasal cavity on both sides. And so... Um, and the arrow is kind of just pointing to that. And, and it kind of makes sense because here's the um, ethmoid bone. And on the other side is where the crystagali is and the cribriform plates are. And that's where the olfactory bulb sits in there. And so, uh, so with this rep epithelium, you also will need to identify. It kind of looks similar, but it, when you really get the hang of it, you can still be able to uh, differentiate why, why it looks different. It has completely different cells in it. Um, it has supporting cells, uh, which are columnar, ce columnar sh cells um, with microvilli. And then it has olfactory cells, which are actually bipolar neurons. And it has about the, um, the same population for both. And then there are basal cells that are adjacent to the basement membrane that are going to give rise to both the supporting cells and the olfactory cells or the bipolar neurons. You're not going to see any goblet cells in the olfactory epithelium. There's not going to be any mucus that is deposited over this specialized epithelium to um, prevent binding of uh, the odorous substances to the cilia. But there are specialized glands in the lamina propria called Bowman's glands, and you can see the lumen of the glands all positioned here, and I'll show you a duct in, in a little bit. And then you also have very large bundles of axons from the afferent nerve endings for the sense of smell that are going to be in the uh, submucosal area. Okay, so <clears throat> the nuclei are positioned in different locations um, of the supporting cells and the... Um, olfactory cells. The kind of line that you see here that is uh, towards the lumen of the nasal cavity, th these nuclei all belong to supporting cells. This is where the nuclei kind of lie in this well, or decently organized line, okay? And they don't really know a lot about their function, but they know that they have a lot of ion channels and that they um, really do help maintain the microenvironment that's conducive to the sense of smell. And then the olfactory cells nuclei are located here at this level of the epithelial sheet. Okay. And then the basal cell nuclei, when you see these closer up in lab, you'll see there's a row of basal cells that's adjacent to the basement membrane. And then you can see other components, the Bowman's glands and the nerve bundles or axons. Okay, so this is a scanning EM of the apical end of an olfactory neuron, and you can see the cilia projecting outwards. And I really, I really liked it. I don't know, it just sort of gave me, gave me a better kind of feel for um, these olfactory neurons to really, really sort of get it. I, I, just, I just liked it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it with that. And so the Bowman's glands is going, are going to be um, putting this fluid out that's going to continuously be rinsing off and bathing the uh, cilia that are projecting um, from these olfactory cells. And so uh, these cilia are going to um, be ready for stimulation. And so when you have odoriferous substances that are in the nasal cavity, they can bind to a lot of these transmembrane chemoreceptors that are sticking off the ends of the cilia. And so that's what I'm trying to show you, this pretend, you know, odoriferous substances, molecules bouncing around, and then some of them are going to come down here and then are going to bind to these transmembrane chemoreceptors. And that is going to simulate an action potential uh, that is going to extend downwards. This is like pretend this is the end of one of the cilia and it's going to extend downward and it's going to um, actually cause an action potential that is going to be transmitted through an axon and it's going to synapse with another neuron in the olfactory bulb and you'll learn about the the rest of the track um, later but so this is where the crystagalli is and you can see all the axons of the olfactory neurons projecting through the um, cribriform plate, I meant to say the cribriform plate. And um, it's really neat when you think about it that these neurons are replaced about every two to three months. Uh, and so here we have a place in the body where neurons regenerate, which is a very rare thing for our bodies. Okay, and then I liked this picture that I saw online where it showed um, 
a duct from a Bowman's gland coming through the epithelial sheet and so the uh, fluid that is made in these glands can go right on top of the epithelial sheet and so that constant flow is really important for um, maintaining the patency or or, or uh, activity of the uh, chemoreceptors okay so the nasal cavity is going to look new, unique depending on the orientation that it is in like this is a horizontal cut of the head and actually I think this is a cat um, and so you can see that uh, it doesn't look it almost looks upside down of what you would think that it, it should look like and, and when you zoom out and you can see uh, these bones here here you kind of get an indication of, of the orientation maybe a little bit better I think what you probably are more comfortable with is a nasal cavity cut that's in a frontal or coronal section so that's displayed here and this is uh, will also be in your lab set so I just wanted to point out that the nasal conche and the way that these um, the walls and the orientation the nas nasal cavity could just be very diverse Okay, so don't forget the nasal concha are those projections from the lateral wall of, of the nasal cavity and they're made up of, of bones. The superior and mesial nasal concha are part of the ethmoid bone. I'll show you here. This is the human uh, diagram of a human. And then the inferior nasal concha, remember, is its own bone within itself. Okay, and these bones are going to be lined with mucosa. You probably remember taking off the mucosa when you dissected the nasal cavity. So that's what we'll be looking at in uh, when we look in lab. Okay. Um, the nasal cavity mostly has respiratory epithelium. A little bit inside the vestibule of the nasal cavity is where the kind of skin from the uh, ectoderm kind of wraps in. And so you do have a little bit of thin skin at the uh, ridge of the vestibule of the nasal cavity, but most of the rest of it has respiratory epithelium. Of course, you're going to have a little bit of that olfactory epithelium in the in the, uh, the uh, I almost said northernmost part, but the most superior part of the nasal cavity. And then a cool feature, and your book really doesn't talk about it this year, this new edition doesn't go over it, but I still think it's cool. They just say that there's complex vasculature just deep to the epithelium. So here you can see the epithelium and uh, this, these very, very large uh, thin-walled vessels that fill um, in the submucosal area. Um, and it's important for warming and um, the air that is inspired through the nasal cavity. Um, I have also other textbooks that call them swell bodies. I don't, I don't know how common that term is, but uh, that's all. All of these. Uh these vessels here and if you look at them kind of uh, closer up you can see that they're they're thin walled um, and your textbook actually describes it more like arteries but I have also seen them described as veins so I changed the term and just put vessels because I don't know if either of them are correct like when you talk about cavernous spaces in a rectal tissue there's not an artery or there are arteries but but the tissue itself that are, is cavernous is just vessel like like structures and then in this slice, um, you can also see bone. That's part of the nasal concha. And you're going to be looking at bone. It's going to help orient you. Uh, and so this, we are going to have to get a little used to its appearance. Okay. And this is a slide uh, of respiratory epithelium. The nasal cavity is going to have goblet cells. It's going to have cilia, ciliated, ciliated columnar cells. And you will see glands and the submucosa. So those are features that you're going to look for for identifying the respiratory uh, epithelium. But if you look over to the area where the olfactory epithelium is located at, then you will see a few uh, differences. So the epithelium, see all these lots and lots and lots of, of dark nuclei, and you don't see any goblet cells here. Um, I know this kind of looks messy, but um, and and so it's kind of hard to see what whether or not uh, what kind of cilia they are. So uh, they both kind of look ciliated and the olfactory epithelium has cilia, they're just not motile cilia. And then you can see Bowman's glands here and, and those are going to help uh, point out that it's not respiratory and then these axon bundles. And here is another slide of olfactory epithelium uh, from Tulane. And I just wanted to show you that the tissue looks much different due to the different staining and we'll be checking this out in lab.